In this lecture, we look at how the two shader programs work together with the application program to produce the desired output. Looking at the vertex and fragment shaders side by side for Linux and Windows, we can see that the out variable defined in the vertex shader is basically an in variable in the fragment shader. Look at the names of the two variables and the types. They match perfectly, except that this one is an out variable here and an in variable in the fragment shader. So out variables declared in the vertex shader must be in variables in the fragment shader. This is a handshake that has to be performed between the vertex and the fragment shader. Here is the same example written for Max, where a similar handshake must be performed. The output variable from the vertex shader is called varying, and it's also defined as a varying variable inside the fragment shader. Now note that this is not as elegant as an out variable defined here becomes an in variable defined in the fragment shader because this is how the variables flow in the graphics pipeline. Also note that in Max, in the fragment shader, we're using the inbuilt variable GL frag color instead of defining a new variable ourselves. Shaders and application program must work together. Remember that attribute or in variables declared in the vertex shader are read only. Their values must be defined in the application program. When the application program has all the data for the attribute variable defined, it needs to know how to link to the attribute variable. How this works in OpenGL is that all the attribute variables in the vertex shaders are stored in a table. The application program can look up this table for the name of the variable to get an index value. All the data linkings are done via this index value. For uniform variable, it works the same. The key idea is to use attribute variable for data that are not going to change. For example, the original vertex coordinates. And to use uniform variable that changes in every frame. For example, the rotation angle. As attribute values are not going to change, we set them up in the init function. For uniform variables, we pass their value we, we pass their new values for every frame inside the display callback function. Here is an example of how to reference attribute or in variables from the application program. Inside the init function, for example, we define a buffer offset and we define a variable location of type GL unsigned integer. The application program can refer to the vertex attribute via this index. Recall that program stores are compiled vertex and shader programs. And this V position variable name must exactly ma match the V position name here defined in the vertex shader uh, with the qualifier in. So basically, the data flows into this V position variable from the application program. We enable the vertex array attribute location in the next line and then pass on a pointer to the actual data. And we also define that the data is two dimensional and we define its offsets and other parameters so that the uh, actual values of the vertex positions are linked from the application program and passed on to the vertex shader. Here is another example where we are referencing two attribute or in variables. One is the vertex position as defined before and the other one is the vertex color. Recall that the vertex and color values are passed in the vertex array buffer which was a single buffer. We must have this vertex position and vertex color variables defined inside the vertex shader with the qualifier in. Also note that we have a stride of zero in both cases and the data does not need to be normalized in both cases. Also note that now we have passing on the value three here since both are three dimensional variables. The one thing different between the vertex position and the vertex color as is that we do not have any offset for the vertex position because the first bit of the array contains the vertex position values whereas the next bit the last half of the vertex array contains the color values and hence we have a size of uh, a, a size of points offset to the buffer now let's look at an example of referencing a uniform variable 
we define the index to the variable in a similar way so that the application program can refer to the variable via this index but now we define gl get uniform location instead of attribute the name of the variable must again resemble exactly in the vertex shader and it must be defined with the qualifier uniform the type of the variable must also resemble the type in with which it is defined inside the program while these definitions and referencing are present inside the init function inside the application program this line gl uniform 1f must also appear inside the display callback function this is because the new value of my angle computed in the application program for every frame needs to be copied to the vertex shader